I've got 99 problems and Wi-Fi 6 and 6E isn't one. Today I am telling you what Wi-Fi 6 and 6E is, why it's changing the game, why it's bleep and awesome, and why we can't really use it yet. I'm Sherry Riggs, you're watching with Slout TV. If you like this video, if it ends up helping you out, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And of course, turn on those notifications. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and Friday, and I'd love for you to join along. So let's just dive right in now. So Wi-Fi 6 has been out for about two years now, and Wi-Fi 6E has just barely started making a name for itself. But before we get into 6E, what is Wi-Fi 6? Well, let's compare it to our cell phone networks. It's like 4G and 5G and however many G's those go up to, but it's with local area networks or home Wi-Fi networks. And so far we are up to Wi-Fi 6 and 6E. So it's just the next generation and home internet. Now before Wi-Fi 6 was Wi-Fi 5, then Wi-Fi 4. And to designate these different Wi-Fi's, they have used the number chain 802.11 with a letter combination after it with either AC or AX or N or insert any number combination, letter combination after that huge long number. So what is so good about Wi-Fi 6? Well, people are really excited because it will speed up our internet connections. Now, not technically, whatever you have paid for your internet service provider to give you, say 150 Mbps download, which is what I have. So while Wi-Fi 6 won't technically speed up my internet and make it faster than what I've paid for, it will capitalize on the data that I already have coming in to my system into my network and make that a bit more easier and quicker to work with. So it just makes things easier and simpler across the board, making our speeds faster. Resourceful. It's resourceful. Wi-Fi 6 is resourceful and smart. That's it. That's it. The end. Just kidding. So how is Wi-Fi 6 smarter? Well, it has a bunch of different acronyms for a bunch of different tools that make Wi-Fi 6, but we'll get to that later. Let's start with this analogy real quick for you. So Wi-Fi 6 doesn't queue up information anymore. So if I'm checking in, if my, if my phone needs to check in with my modem router for notification, if I'm streaming on my TV, sometimes that gets caught in a queue and that's when we get lagging, that's when we get buffering. Wi-Fi 6 is kind of like a shotgun. It can send out multiple signals at once and we don't have to wait for lines anymore. We don't have to queue up our devices for that signal to come back and forth. And so therefore it is much more resourceful and again, keeping us with faster data, making sure our speeds are staying up to par. So I'm trying to memorize this term, but I cannot memorize it. So I'm going to look down at my computer and my editor is going to bring in some fun graphics. This is called OFDMA or orthogonal frequency division multiple access. OFDMA basically means that all of our devices and our connection, our router, are going to be able to intermingle much more easily, allowing for multiple different conversations to happen at once between our devices, which ultimately is gonna save us lots of time, also battery power, and speed up our data pretty substantially. And that applies to our uplinks and our downlink speeds. So all around Wi-Fi 6 is just a much bigger upgrade than Wi-Fi 5 ever was. <laughs> it's almost kind of too easy. Like why weren't we doing this before? It makes all of these things that are new to Wi-Fi 6 is almost like this should have already been happening, but now it finally is. So we're getting there and Wi-Fi is about to be awesome. So now that I've kind of given you an overview of what Wi-Fi 6 is, do we need it? Is it useful? Should we put an investment into it right now? Now, in my opinion, for myself, no, I'm not gonna do that quite yet. And I'm not necessarily sure any of you should either. I mean, if you're up for spending the cash to get into six Wi-Fi 6, then go for it. If you have enough devices that can access Wi-Fi 6, then I think it's a great thing. Getting faster internet speeds and getting just an overall better experience with your Wi-Fi is never a bad thing, but it's just kind of complicated for two reasons. One. Not many devices are Wi-Fi 6 capable. So for instance, for iPhones, only the iPhone SE and newer are capable of connecting to Wi-Fi 6E. And for Androids, for Samsung Galaxies, for instance, only phones newer than at the S10 and newer can connect to Wi-Fi 6E. So it's a very small portion of the market that can connect to Wi-Fi 6. And then on that end, 
getting into Wi-Fi 6, getting a modem router combo in your home to blast out Wi-Fi 6 is hard too because it's expensive. The average price of a Wi-Fi 6 modem router is a few hundred dollars and some of them go up to over a thousand dollars, which is just crazy and that's for a high-end mesh system. So, I mean, you could potentially be putting a lot of money into this if you want Wi-Fi 6. You're gonna have to get the devices that connect to it and then you're gonna have to get the system itself to make it possible. So, and for those two reasons, I'm hesitant to tell anybody to break into Wi-Fi 6 right now. However, in a few months, many people believe on the horizon. And even currently, there are cheaper modem routers being brought to the market that are more budget friendly, but until that happens, until there's a wider array of options to make it cheaper to get into this game, I'm gonna say hold off on upgrading to Wi-Fi 6 right now. With that being said, if you're into the speed, if you have the need for speed, and if you're like my dad who always likes to have top of the line connections and devices for everything, then this might be for you. But then I'm also gonna say, beep, take a quick pause because enters the ring Wi-Fi 6E, which steps up Wi-Fi to a whole other level. If Wi-Fi 5 is a nice little freeway that is chugging along just fine, Wi-Fi 6E is like this bullet train because where Wi-Fi 6 uses the 2.5 and 5 gigahertz spectrum for Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6E now has access to a sub six gigahertz spectrum, which this whole new spectrum is going to change the game completely. And then when we look at the devices and availability to connect to 6E, that's even slimmer. So we have lots of options for fast and quick and better, stronger, faster Wi-Fi coming up. And that's why I'm hesitant to say go to six because six E is on the horizon. And if you get something that's six, but then you want six E, then you have to upgrade everything again. And it's just like this whole never ending circle of consumerism. So we can win this game. We just gotta play it smartly. So hold off on upgrading your system until you have enough things that can connect to six or six E and then, and then slowly upgrade and make it a new ecosystem for all your devices. I realize this review and this explanation of Wi-Fi 6 and 6E isn't super in-depth or super technical, but I hope it gives you a good overall explanation of what to expect from these systems coming out in the future and that are currently out now. I'm excited to see what I do with them. I'm getting a Wi-Fi 6 modem router to test in the mail in a few weeks from CES, so I'm excited to see how that changes the game for me and my roommate and all of our work that we do from home. I am really excited to see how that goes, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any videos you want me to script out and film, let me know in the comments below. I'm Sherry Riggs, you're watching Whistle Loud TV.